Hi everyone, welcome to the Painters Podcast. I'm here nice. with Matt, is popped in, and we're just having a catch up and a, a bit of a hash down on 2023 and talking about what what's a year. There. What a year that was. <laughs> How fast did that go? <laughs> you know, that's, that's just been one of those mad years. And then we'll have a, a chat of what we think is going to happen, sure. you know, heading into 2024, because there's, there's, you know, a fair bit of act going on out in the marketplace and certainly plenty of people looking for staff, plenty of people growing their businesses and, you know, looking for, for assistance in all the right manners. But, but let's just have a review and look back to 2023 of, of how the year's gone, you know. So, Matt, you're 2023. What have you heard out in the marketplace? What's you know, yeah? What's well, we've still on? got the the big issue, of course, is getting staff. Of course, that's uh, continues to be a massive problem. Yep. So, while there's many businesses that have got the right systems in place, they're doing really well. Uh, they're looking after their clients. They're producing amazing work, but because they can't get the right staff. Yep. They're sort of limited. They're, they're um, they can't grow any further. Yep. Um, and also, there was a number of businesses that decided, look, rather than us go through the lucky dip of trying to get the right person that that wasn't wasn't working out, uh, they've decided to, to actually um, stay that the same size, if not get a little bit smaller. Yep. Uh, and just concentrate on that. So. Um, I think that's going to continue um, in 2024, of course. Big time. Um, I think also, I think that a lot of painters have suddenly realised that they need to diversify in terms of who they're working for. Yep. And the, the builders, the project builders going, br going bust, oh. I really think was the big story of 2023. Yep. You know, they might have had an excellent working relationship with those builders for a very long time. Um, and then they've just, they've, they've gone under. I know there's yep. unprecedented um, issues for the for building industry, especially the, you've talked about this a lot, the fixed price yes. sort of contracts and yep. not, not being able to adjust to this um, unforeseen rises in costs and also yep. not being able to get materials so i think that i think those two things the labor issue and also needing to diversify from just doing um you know for instance project builders that was just two things um, yep. i think that i i've seen in you yep. yourself nigel what have yeah you well i actually heard an interesting statistic this morning um that everything on average has gone up by a minimum of 15% in the last two years. Right. So the, the things that have gone up, you know, just your, your milk, your bread, your, I mean, fuel don't even go there in the last couple of years, that's, that's shot through the roof. All of those types of things that are continuing to go up and up and up. But the return for the tradie or the painter or the business owner, they haven't put those on costs on top. You know, talking to the apprentices, all the time they're struggling talking to you know i get business owners contacting me almost daily can you help me can you help me i need to to work out i'm doing all this work i've got all this work ahead of me but when my bass comes in i haven't got or i could just got a scrimp to 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 cover those Spot costs on. so i've got yes. what am i doing wrong how how is it i've got all this work and but i'm not making any money but on their their p l it says they're making money but where's it go? These are the questions that I think the next two or three years are really going to weed a lot of businesses I think, out. Yeah, I think, I think what we've seen in the last 12 months is the start, and I think it's just going to continue to ex expand, continue to, to unfortunately clean, do a big clean out. Mm. There'll be a lot more companies out there. So your companies that are ahead of the game that actually have their, their systems and processes and have that understanding and they've got their, their costings and they know what where they're making money, they know where they're losing money, they know at the hiring, the firing, they're, they're across all of that. They've got an enormous opportunity um, coming over the next certainly 12, if not 12 months, two years, mm. you know, because if they, they're positioned correctly now, then 
they're not going to, as, as the other ones fall over, they're going to be there to scoop up the cream. They are. Absolutely. So, you know, the biggest one, look, I'm a big advocate, don't work for builders. They're not going to, you know, you can't make money working for a builder. No. The builder's there to make the money for himself. Absolutely. And you're just labour hire, primarily. Um, you know, you're doing it for a dollar, you're not even pricing the work, he's giving you the work. Right. At the end of the day, the margins are so tight, well, there's, there's no profit in it, or very little. It's almost that, I know you are spent a lot, of, not just last year, but for many years, talking about sham contracting. Yep. Now, <clears throat> I think that, how can you be a contractor, and I'm talking about the principal contractor as a painter, and I've done yep. it over the years, been in the industry for, for well over 30 years. Yep. Um, how can, like the epitome of being a contractor is you go to the client and they say, I want this scope of work. You sit down with your own costings as a business and you say to the, to the, the person, I'm going to charge you $1,000 to do that job. Yeah. That's the, when it's, you, they, in a sense, they come to you or, and go, well, okay, we've, um, we've decided this job's worth, uh, Four hundred dollars, take it or leave it. It's it's it, the very essence of contracting is gone, mm. and every in, in reality it is um, glorified wages. And I think that people who have spent their whole business lives just basically being in servitude to those business, I think the necessary skills, which are how do we, what are our real uh, pricing. Uh, how do we really price things? Because we hear that all the time. I, I really don't know how to quote. I do this. I, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm lost. I don't really know what all the time. What do you charge for, you know, a painter? What should they be getting? And you're thinking, well, if you've been in the industry for 10, 15 years, you should be across that. And I think oh, one of the things definitely. that we haven't progressed is because the the easy money, which is do your job, just get paid, do the job, just get paid, that sort of thing, I think hasn't fostered um, the business acumen that I think our, our industry needs. And you're right, because the big end of town or the, the guys who really got their stuff together, they have <coughs> professional estimators. That's they right. have the supervisors out there and they are just, you know, their job is to keep everybody on track. Yep. Um, they know where every dollar is going because that they have to survive. So I think you're right. We're going to have a huge cull, I think, in many ways. Yeah. I think coming to I the think, You know, I'll just touch on one of the points that you just raised there, the, the sham contract okay. side. Uh, people that know me, that's a, a bit of a pet hate of mine. Um, but, you know, for, for some people out there, it, it's a necessary evil, unfortunately, but they don't understand that when you're working that way, sometimes you're a lot worse off. Because you, you, if you're an ABN holder and you're working on a, a, an ABN rate, yeah. okay, that's an all-up rate, including everything. And yeah. the majority of them out there from, you know, this is on posts on Facebook, people are, are asking these questions and they don't know that, yeah, if they're getting 50 bucks an hour, they're going to take their tax out of it. Now, if you're, if you're a business running an ABN, that's 30%. Yeah. You know, yes, you can take your expenses, your fuels, your vehicles, costs, all that sort of stuff. So, yes, you get it back, but it's still you've got to put aside thirty percent. Mm. So, when you put aside thirty percent, then throwing your superannuation on top of that, there's another eleven percent off that dollar figure. Yeah. Then you throw in, you know, your other bits and pieces to get to work. A lot of them are providing their own tools and equipment. A lot of them are doing all of those sorts of things. Suddenly, they're working for less than the basic wage. You know, your, your basic wage well, what is... about their work cover? Well, you have an accident on accident your job. Work. Exactly. I mean, you finished. You know, well, we know of cases that that's occurred where, you know, um, I know one fairly bad case that occurred where, where a guy fell, he was on ABN. Uh, as it turned out, he had, because he was on ABN and he'd been on ABN for quite a while, um, the employer, he wasn't covered under work cover. because is you that have right? To, yep. You have to put in pay slips. So the guy fell, had an accident, fell off a roof, couldn't go back to work for months, and, and the employer actually got fined by work cover. He got fined because he, he's not an employee. No. So, 
as, a, as, as someone that's working in the sham contracting on an hourly rate, you have to have your own accident and illness protection yeah. to protect yourself yep. because you're not covered. Unless you get a pay slip, you're not covered under that. Right. So it's, you know, so there's, there's all sorts of fines. And then that particular one, I know the, the employer, what he'd been paying the, um, the, the, the ABN contractor, or contractor, yep. what he'd been paying him, they then deemed that the net of what had to be paid. Right. The principal contractor then, from that moment there, yep. then had to pay the tax on top. Yes. Then the super superannuation on the gross. Yes. Then have to pay work cover a chunk yep. to a, because he should have been a, deemed an employee and got fined. So got fined for workplace health and safety for not having the correct procedures and everything else in place. So all of a sudden, and because they take it back to when they started, which was years. Yeah. So that, that I understand cost in the tens of, and not low tens, high tens of thousands of dollars. Right. It's not something that, you know, that, and then that person that had that fall, you know, then they're impacted for the rest of their life yeah, as well. Yeah, absolutely. So there's a whole range of things there that, that people don't realise, yeah, okay, I'm on ABN, but ABN doesn't mean what it used to. If you're, if you're, look, there's nothing wrong with being a subcontractor. No. If you're being a subcontractor and it's being subcontracted properly, mm. there's not a drama. But if you're being paid per hour, yep. then told, you... Told, told when to start, yep. when to have a break, why aren't you on the job, where are you, all of those, all of those things, things. You are an employee. Absolutely. Absolutely that's, you, you know, are. That's the, the biggest thing there with you know with the sham contracting. Absolutely. But that's by the by with that one. So mm -hmm. we'll let that one sit because that gets me going. Your blood um, pressure's gone up. Oh, no, 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 no. I've <laughs> spoken about it so many times. You guys out there are probably sick of uh, hearing me mention it. No, but, well, it's... but it's something that continually gets brought up in our Facebook group. And if it's going to be continually brought up again and again and again and again and again, obviously there's a systemic problem within our industry that it needs to be addressed. And the issue too, I know, I know it wasn't a pain, it was actually a concreter. And he had a you know very, succe very successful business. Yep. And um, then there was a dispute with, with, with two of the guys and they went and, and uh, I think it was wage line or one of those yep. ones and yep. they said, no, hang on, this is, you know, the, uh, th this is sham contracting. Mm -hmm. What actually happens is it is not the, the, per the, the ABN holder, put it that way, yep. It's, it, they don't go after the ABN holder. No. This is what happens. No. It's the business owner. So Principal this person contractor. I knew went for, let's just say, nearly 100 grand. Yep. Okay? So now, um, so the, the, the onus, I think, is happen. if you've got people on ABN, yep. um, you need to get the proper advice to protect yourself. You might be thinking, look, I'm actually, this is the way it's always been and yep. your best of intention, you're not trying to scam anybody um, and maybe the guys are really happy, but you, you don't know what's going to happen exactly. in the future. If there's a, dis usually, let's be honest, there's a bit of a fallout and someone goes, oh, hang on, uh, I think you owe me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, they they, 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 they do, don't out. they? They do. So exactly what happens. It don't, you know, protect and, yourself. You're a business yeah. owner. Yep. Um, if they're owed, especially um, super. Yep. Now, as you said, um, it has gone up to eleven percent. I think. Yeah, it is, it is. absolutely. 11%. So you think about that. If it's so you have had somebody for three or four years, oh, that's wow. a lot of money, and you've got to come up with it. That's, so yeah. that that's really important. That's um, twenty thirty thousand dollars. Absolutely. You know, if you've got if you've got a contractor that you're paying on ABN forty dollars, let's just for easy numbers, round it out to fifty dollars an hour. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you're paying them fifty bucks an hour. That's two grand a week. That is another twenty two hundred dollars yeah, in super. That's correct. Sorry, two hundred and twenty dollars. Yeah, two hundred and twenty dollars yep. in super every week. Yes. Yep. So that's a hundred thousand dollars a year for their wage, plus. Another eleven thousand dollars a year just for their superannuation. That's correct. So you you have to when you're running a business, you have to allow those things. You have to put those things in. You have to 
make sure that they're part of what you're doing. Mm. You know, and this is where it goes back to what we were talking about, that the, the businesses that are out there currently that are growing, you know, and are, are getting their, their systems in place and getting everything working properly moving forward are the ones that are going to be there to pick up the people as they fall off. Because you're going to find businesses are going to fold. There's no, we know it's happening, we know it's going to continue to happen. And it all comes back to not having that correct foundation in their business to understand the principles of what they're doing, you know. And look, COVID's hit, you know, and let's go back to COVID, okay. So that, a lot of people have been caught out with, with the government payments and things like that that were given out. So people were thinking and businesses were thinking, oh, I'll put on this person, I'll put on that person, we'll get, we'll get extra money, we get wage subsidised on that and all those sorts of things. Then when it came round to it, they didn't realise that those subsidies actually went in as income and then you got taxed as a business at 50%. <laughs> so the government... The there government is no free lunch. There the is no free lunch. Absolutely not. The government kept the economy going. They kept people in jobs during COVID. They did all of those sorts of things. And then stunned the small business people with 30% of what they gave them. So they've hired more people... And the, the the and the entitlements. And, the that, and so if they haven't put... They didn't, yeah. you know... They, they, so they get taxed on all of that. Yeah. And so I know a lot of businesses that did do that stuff but didn't have that understanding and that's when it's come back to bite them as well. So, but look, with 2023, as you were saying yep. back at the beginning, a lot of places falling over, struggling, having all sorts of dramas and problems. I think it's going to continue for the next 12 months. Um, and I think that we're going to find, like I said before, those that have the right grounding and the right business business structure, um, have an opportunity to actually grow their business at a, at a very good rate. You know, I'm not saying go from a, a one-man band to a 10-man band overnight. No. I'm saying, but over the next 12 months, succession plan and look at where you're going to be in 12 months' time. And as the, some of these other businesses fall over, you know, it's a, it's a domino effect because you're going to have the builder that's going to go bust owing $10 million. Yep. All the other trades, well, they're, that's the, the subbies that are all owed that money, yeah. that $10 million. So you're going to have painting companies out there that are owed 50, 60, 100 grand. And that'll put them under. And that'll put them to the wall. Now, if they're running that sort of business that they're turning over in the million plus or two million plus or whatever in their business, and all of a sudden they get hit with that, there's going to be 10, 12 staff in the ground. Absolutely. Straight away. Yep. So, and this is where we're going to find that, and, and, and that you know, the staffing is going to continue. Staff are going to continue to come in because of issues that are occurring that aren't necessarily the business owner's fault. It's stuff that's happening, you know, right across all the industry. Absolutely. It's the same, look, painting, and this is one that, that I know I've spoken to you about, and I've spoken to plenty of other people. Painting is different to any other trade. People don't sort of realise that, that we have a unique trade, not that we just make everyone else's work look good, because we do that. That's what we have to That's do. That. Exactly. Chipping in the tube. Exactly. So we do that. But what a lot of it has to do with is that when they build a building, we're back there six to ten years later, and we're the only trade that is. So the more they build today, the more work we actually have in the future. You know, the government's talking in Queensland, I know it's happening in other parts of the country, but in Queensland, you know, I've heard that they they need 500 handovers a day. 500 houses need to be handed over per day in Queensland to actually keep up with the the growth of our population. Okay, so in 10 years' time, what we currently have on the our workload yeah. will be added by $500 a day. But it's not just 10 years. Back my parents' generation and my parents' parents, my grandparents' generation, they generally lived in their houses 20 to 30 years. Absolutely. Okay? So they've lived in that house 20 to 30 years. And they might have got it painted twice. Or they might have done it themselves or whatever, you know, to bring costs down. So over a 30-year period, every 15 years it would get painted. Okay? Now, then to our generation, we lived in our houses and we I currently live in mine. I've been there for 11 years now. It's... I'm just about to do a second paint job on it, you know. So um, we're doing that. But on average, now the people that are buying today are selling every six years. Yep. So because the houses get turned it's over, turned over yeah. there's more painting to be done. So we've got more painting work. So we literally have 
nearly three times as much painting work in the repaint market today yeah. than we did 30 years ago. But do you think, that's true, but do you think that, um, uh, I think education in terms of our sustainability as an industry is just vital. Yeah. Now to me, the way I look at it is that we know that, we're, you know, we're old war horses in terms of, of, of our industry, we, we know that, but my uh, fear is that bigger players, I'm not talking about painting, I'm talking about construct, uh, building yeah, companies, building. they come in and they just start pumping out these um, these homes. You know, mm -hmm. government incentives come yep. in, they will, and they're yeah, just yeah. going to mushroom out again. How do we, and it's an open question, I suppose, how do we get fellow painters to s stop and go, yeah, okay, you've got a solid three years worth of work for me and 20 of my 20 of our crew to go and do you know southeast queensland that that corridor yep. is uh, towards the gold coast from brizzy up all, all the way through and sunshine coast which is the other way um how do we stop people at least going hey yeah that's good that's good to have that pipeline of work but two things number one how do they come to those prices is it is as in what they're offering us yep. and secondly i mean i'm negative on this is i don't think cost of living is going to go down i think it's just going to keep on ticking up and up and up and up and how do we say to people look if you're tied in even 12 months i mean prices paint every few months is going up oh we're really sorry the price is going up. oh we're really sorry it's another five percent another seven percent another two percent how do we, how do we as an industry get us to actually take a bit of a breather and go, don't just grab that pipeline of work um, because, as you've said, that unless the, the, the um, prices are factored in, I mean, the plumbers, their prices have gone through the roof. Yep. The electricians, oh, we're talking to one of the trade trade shows, what the lady's name, from the Bricklayers Association. Yep. Yeah. What was she saying? Carlin. Was it your car What was she saying per brick? Was it three dollars? Three dollars a three brick. Three dollars a brick. But part of that, see, this is where three dollars to lay a brick. Yeah, and this is where part of it comes down to. And guys, your your best bricklayers are doing a thousand a day. But they are. Your top yeah. guys are doing yeah. a thousand a day. But what'd you do with all that money? I oh, know. Go. Just how many me. jet skis do you exactly. say? Exactly. You know, that's how it is. Right. But no, that and education of. I guess the, the people that are coming through, um, the apprentices, people, unfortunately, there are, you're always going to have people that will do something for a dollar. They'll, they'll do something cheaper. The, the mentality of, of people is if he can do that or she can do that for $100, I can do it for $99 or I can sell it for $99. It, it's, it, it's an unfortunate part of society that there's an, and particularly in the painting industry, it's about getting a volume of work, you know, but you, you do it getting a volume of work, but you're not making money. That goes back to. Well, what happens when you're at the pub and you can talk about your turnover? Oh, we turned over. Oh. Yeah, what about right. that? Turnover's great. Yeah. <laughs> but if you've got no money in the bank no, at the end of the no, year, yes, after you've paid everything on the end of the week, yeah. you're slow long. You know, you're not running. You've got to remember, you're running a business. You're not. You're always going to find people that will work for less than you. There's, but you don't worry about that. You know, if if someone wants to go and work for thirty dollars a square meter, good luck to them. They're going to have to cut every corner. The jobs aren't being done to Australian standards, and all it's doing is creating a, a, a problem for the future painters. Oh, okay? well, that isn't that an issue. That adds to the next problem. Yeah. But it don't work in that area. Don't work in that sector. You know, back in, in 2010, 2011, I have an accident in 2011. So let's say 2009, 2010, yep. I was getting 35 a floor. 35 a square metre floor, floor yeah, yeah. off the floor. Yep. Now, no homes that we did were under 450, 500 square metres. They were all big homes. But we were getting, they were three coat systems. We were getting paid. We, we could make money back then. Yeah. I was buying a 20 litre drum of paint back then, not 15 for less than what they pay for a 15 now. You know, we were paying $60 a drum. Is that right? Back in the day. Wow. Yeah. You know, so it's not, 
you know, it, it's yeah, it's so the, 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 the guys today yeah. working for yeah. the, the for those ones are paying double for the materials and still getting less than what I was getting over ten years ago because they didn't know their numbers, they didn't know their figures. You know, I sat down with my builder, or two of them actually. I worked for two builders. Um, I did work for a couple of others. I got burnt by one. One actually, it was a really big lesson. It cost me 50 grand back in the early 2000s. That's a big lesson. Back in the early 2000s. <laughs> that was a big lesson. Um, you know, I was lucky. I was in a position where I could carry that, you know. Um, but what happens is that people get offered all this work. They, they're continually being offered all this work. And they, all they see is a dollar. They don't actually sit down and look at it and say, hang on. For that dollar, how am I going to do it? It's like we go back to that sham contracting. You can say, well, I'm going to pay that bloke 40 bucks. He's going to cost me $1,600 a week. What am I going to get a return out of that? But you don't look at all the other things that go with it. Right. You're not taking those other expenses. You're not taking all of And neither is the person that's doing the, no. that's being paid. They're not allowing for all of their other things. And that's, that's another issue and problem and, and everything else down the line. We see it happen happen all too often. It's I, I one of the biggest ones I get. A lot of guys will come to me, and, and particularly in the last twelve months, yep. uh, companies are coming to me, or, or painters are coming to me, business owners, and saying, "Hey, listen, I've been offered a million dollars worth of work." Yeah, and I was like, "Okay, so what are you doing? Pick out the colour of the Lamborghini that you want." Yeah, basically, <laughs> isn't that it, isn't it like that? Yeah. You see that figure and you think, "Hallelujah!" So, yeah, so on. the builder, the builder's offering a million dollars worth of work, and I say, "Okay, so you're talking hundred grand. So let's just work on one point two hundred grand a month, hundred grand a month's worth of work." And they're a three man band, so I'm going to need to find eight staff. Okay. Okay. Well, hundred thousand dollars. You're going to need to churn that in a month. You're going to need eight staff. Absolutely. You know, as a minimum, you know, you, you might get away if you got some really good ones, but you know, let's just work on hundred grand eight staff. Okay, so you got eight staff. So each of your eight staff, each week, are going to cost you two grand. Yep. Two grand. So there's sixteen grand. That's your first week. You go start work. You put your your first ten grand's worth of paint on your your paint account. Then. The end of the first week, there's 16 grand. Boop. There you go, oh, guys, you've been paid. Then you go to the second week, there's another 16 grand. You're 32 in the hole. Plus your paint, you haven't paid your paint yet, the paint bill's still to come. Then you do your third week, there's another 16 grand. Then you do your fourth week. You still haven't been paid yet, and yeah, your paint bill's due. And you put in the invoice a day late, you've got to wait another 30 days. Or even if you put in the invoice on the right day and the builder didn't like something on it, and he says, oh, I'm not paying you. You're $64,000 in the hole, plus you can't book up any bank to your account because you can't afford to pay that. Yeah, but I'm good for it because I'm getting a million bucks in 12 months' time. This I'm is, rich. But this is yeah, a mentality, that, unfortunately. It's true, isn't it? When you break it, it yeah, down yeah, into exactly. those simple, simple systems, people don't understand it until you break it down into that simplistic system unless you have cash flow and if you're tying all your eggs in one basket unless you have cash flow you're not going to survive because I can tell you right now you put you take on that million dollar job okay over a 12 month period you're going to need 150 grand in the bank backing you because if you don't you won't keep your staff because you don't pay them they leave. They just walk. They walk. And they'll chase you and they'll go to fair work and they'll do all those other things. And rightfully so. If so. someone yeah. works, you did, that's, their deal is they work and they deserve to be paid and it's not up to them to to worry about, in a sense, your finances. I'm <laughs> sure it was a bit different, but it's not. Well, so, it's no different to the builder. Oh, we're waiting on getting paid and then we'll fix you up. We hear that every second day. Every second day I hear that from... from we pay parents. you when we get paid. Isn't we pay you we when pay. we get paid. That's exactly it. And that, and that, unfortunately, is another massive problem in the industry. Yeah. You know, if, if, and I mean in Queensland, there, there's, under the QBCC regulations, there are, you do have some options there where you can actually dob them into the QBCC that they haven't paid you on the yeah, time. Yeah, that's true. But 
that's, you know, that, that's in other states don't necessarily have that, that you've got to go through fair work or you've got to go through but with the, the, with the regula that, building regulatory bodies. With that example, the, like, the, the, uh, the builder, for instance, um, they're doing the right thing. So they are paying you the, the uh, allotted payments so the, the payment you know, schedule that you have. Time. Okay, they're doing all of that, but it's the running costs. Yeah, and then also at the at the end of a particular uh, stage of the project, I know you you have you know all of the touch ups that need to happen. How, how is that? I know you know, yeah. you know the carpet layers come to my commercial work. In my experience, they come in and they do this, and you've got literally hundreds of square meters of walls yep. that need to be skirtings and things that need to be touched where up. does that well you know, that's how that's much is as a variation yeah. that's you know and, and that's what needs to be done it doesn't happen no. in a lot of cases but that's what needs to be done or they put down the carpet they tell you not to paint the skirtings don't paint the skirtings the carpet's down well hang on it's going to triple your time oh. to, to do that double sort of handling of everything and exactly and this is where the education side, so painters aren't educated, or tradies, full stop, not just painters, mm -hmm. but tradies aren't educated, although we tend to go back more for touch-ups and things like that than anyone else, um, but we're not educated, or the majority aren't educated, to on-charge those things. They just wear it. How many times over your career would you have painted the door for free for a client? Yeah. Yeah. Too many times. How many? Hundreds. Absolutely. A hundred times. Well, that's worth a hundred bucks each. That's ten grand. It is, sure. But it's, you know, and this is this is what we don't understand. That as painters, we're happy to go that little bit extra. We're happy to do those extra things to get that job. We're the finishing trade. Mm -hmm. You know, we finish everyone's work. Yep. And, and we should be paid more. And back in the day, painters used to get paid more than any other trade. Right. When you walk into a building or you walk into a house, no matter who it is... You notice the painting. You notice the painting. Yet the painters are squabbling over $50 an hour, $60 an hour. Yep. They, they should be squabbling over $150 an exactly hour. Exactly, I agree. Or $160 an hour. I agree, I agree. I that's, the, that's where we need to be. Yep. Because, you know, I mean, I sat down again the other day with another, um, another painter. Um, so I do this as part of membership stuff. Anyone who joins as a gold member, I sit down with them and help them set up their finance stuff. And we worked out... $42 an hour is what it costs him to run his business. Okay. Over the last 12 months, $42 an hour. That's before he gets out of bed. That's what it's costing him as a two-man band. Really? Yeah. Yep. Well, he's got two vehicle leases. He's right. Got, oh, you know, I see what you mean. So yeah, he's, got, got, he's no, leasing his vehicle. He's leasing his wife's vehicle. They've got... You know, when you sit down and you look at their, their QBCC license yep, fees, right. you look at insurances, you look at petrol. Now, people will disagree with me on some of this about petrol, but I just work out petrol. I say, how much do you spend? And I know it's not necessary. It's a cost that is an ongoing cost. It's not a cost prior to your starting work, but you still got to fill up your truck or your car before you go to work. So and you are spending tolls? the money. What about tolls? tolls? That was he was spending uh, 120 a week on fuel. So 40 hours, it's $3 an hour, just for his petrol. He was spending $3 an hour on his hourly rate. He was charging out 65 bucks an hour. Oh, well, there you go, you're going broke. Couldn't, he was. Really? Right, that's, okay. that's why he came to me. That's why he contacted me and said, what do I do? How can you help me? What do I need to do? Right. How am I going to fix it? Yes. So we sat down and, yep. and went through that and looked at what he needed to be at about 110. If he wasn't, if he's not getting work at 110 an hour, he's better off going and working for someone at 40. Yeah. He's, he's, you know, even 30 potentially, 30 an hour plus super plus holidays plus all the other things, because he's 65, he was at 42, plus the 30 is 72, right? So he's, he's 72 and he's only earning 30 an hour. But then out of his 30 an hour, he's got to pay his rent, he's got to pay his food, he's got to pay or mortgage in that case, you know, all those other things. So this is where people don't understand that, that and I know we've probably gone a little bit off topic, all right, but That's no problem. people need to understand that you need to know what your numbers are and understand your business before you go into 
any contract. Yeah, so 2024 really should be a, a time of really looking... Consolidation. Consolidation, that is it. And it, it I've said it before in other podcasts, I've got mates of mine who, who, who are plasterers and they are earning, they are earning a thousand dollars a day, mm. okay? Yep. Now, um, that is just pretty much unheard of for most painters. And, and to be honest, when I see the online discussions where people are talking about what they should earn and so forth, and there's this almost this current where people are saying, well, oh, but we're, you know, we're, oh, we're just painters or we're not this and we're not that. And you're thinking, well, that, without being disrespectful, I said it before, but what makes plasterers any different? That you, Painting and plastering my dad's time was the same trade. Yeah. So how is it that, I mean, I know how it's happened, but we have been taken advantage of. Let's just be 100%. honest. 100%. We have been taken advantage of that, um, as we joke, this world's that if you can piss, you can paint, or whatever it was. Yeah. This idea that um, our trade is the lowest of the low, and we spoke about it once before, about our, our rates are just falling and falling and yeah. falling, and we've still got this garbage where um, established businesses are running on the on the motto, which I can't stand. We will be any written quote. quote. Are you nuts? Like, how do you know that person's um, you done the figures? And there's no need for that. They won't have done the figures. This is the whole thing. Everyone looking for, for something cheap, at the end of the day, you buy cheap, you get cheap. And that's that's how it works. If you want to pay for you want to pay for a quality job, you you want to work for a quality job. You want to get paid to do a quality job. I know that there's there's companies out there that go in, smash out a house in a day or two, bang, move to the next one. You know, and, and there's no quality in there. They can't they, there's no pride in the work. It's just making. Trying you to couldn't make money. do well if you, you couldn't do any prep. Let's just yeah. put it this way: if you're doing a repaint, and they're they're doing it in a day or what? It, I doubt it very much hmm. that you're you, that you're doing the the adequate preparation. No. You're okay. Right. And um, the fact is this: that uh, you know, it's, it's like a, a situation. I knew if someone did a place, wasn't me. And the, the owner said, oh, look, we're going to be selling the house. Come on, cheap and cheerful. We don't care. Touch up and one sort of thing like that. And guess what happened? They decided not, not to sell. Else. So then in a couple of years' time, what happened? Things started, you know, that's, oh, yeah, it's yeah. only this. Well, give us a say. Yeah, exactly right. And so that is, that's just, um, and I, I think the mentality that, oh, well, uh, we'll leave it to somebody else. I don't. I don't think that's. You know. I don't think that bodes well. You know. If we're building up a, a reputation, a local area, the yeah. last thing you want is to be known as somebody that's producing that goes into rubbish work. work. And absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, it's. It's. All comes back to supply and demand as well. Now, at the moment, we have a massive demand for painters. We do. To be undercutting each other, is crazy. Mm. Absolutely crazy. You know, there's, there's so much work out there in the marketplace. And if you market yourself, if you put yourself out there, if, if, depending on the size of the business you are or you want to grow to or any of those sorts of things, there's more than enough work out there. I don't, it doesn't matter what town you're in, what city, what if, if you look hard enough, there's work. And you should be able to get the dollar for the work. You know, yes, you're going to have people that undercut you. Yes, you're going to have, you know, those types of things that you, you've just got to deal with, and, and that's it. You just have to deal with those. But you won't... Wh why cut your own throat mm -hmm. to try to compete with them? I would rather compete with those at the top than compete with those at the bottom. Absolutely. And there's chalk and cheese between top and bottom. I know you you really are an expert in the field of... I don't know about expert. No, you are. No, I'm serious. You, in, in terms of uh, um, advertising and uh, promoting uh, businesses and so forth, is there a... Because I really believe in in, in marketing and so forth. Mm -hmm. Is there a... Put on the spot. Is there a dollar 
that business should, should be putting aside? Is there, something, is there a on, metric yeah, like that? Or? Depending on where, how, how the size of your business is. Okay, so it's going to be different from business to of business. Of course, of course. Okay, because yeah. your, your outgoings are different depending on each individual sure. business. Rule of thumb, I'd work on probably 10%. Right. 10% of turnover. Really? Would be on marketing. Wow. Now, there's going to be people out there that are going to say, oh, I don't have to market. Mine's word of mouth. I do all. Yeah, fine if you're a one or two man band. One or two man band that's been established for more than 10 years should only be word of mouth. Because you've been doing business, because you're getting yeah. the repeat business and then you're going and work for the auntie, the uncle, the son, the daughter, that sort of stuff. Yes, a business that size. But if you're getting, you know, and back in the day I was the same. I, I was um, keeping between 12 and 15 guys going yep. and I probably wasn't spending, because I had an established name, um, you know, I was st well, still spending um, about 7 to 8%. Wow. On, okay. you know, and back in the day, all I had was yellow pages and local papers. We didn't have Google, we didn't have no, Facebook, no, we didn't have any of those I'll sorts of things. So you're talking, so, but it depends on how many people you've got. If you're, but you, you reach a threshold in a business. So if you're a, a, a one to eight man business, forget about the one and two man band, so let's say three to eight man business. Yep. A three to eight man business will generally be run by the owner operator. That's correct. Okay, they'll be able to manage pretty much everything. They've probably got a bookkeeper or the partner do the bookkeeping or whatever it might be, but there'll be someone doing the bookkeeping. As soon as you start to get to that ninth or tenth person, mm -hmm. You need to hire someone to either quote or manage your jobs. Absolutely. Okay, so you're, you're looking at a different perspective there. Now, if you're hiring someone to quote or manage jobs, you've got other costs that you've got to take into account, like a vehicle and a phone and a, all those other things that, that change that perspective of that business. So this is where then you'll reach a saturation point at about 20, between sort of 16 to 20 people where probably 20 because you can still be managing stuff, but you're going to be then looking for another estimator or another supervisor. So you, because you can only do so many quotes in a day or so many quotes in a week or month, you, you, your one and two man band at most are probably going to be needing 15 clients a year. Mm. At, at most. At most. At most. So yeah. 15 clients a year, because some jobs you'll do full interior, exterior, yeah, some one smaller. or two of you and yeah. some are smaller. Yeah. You know, some jobs you might be on a month, some jobs you might be on a week. So let's say 15 to 20 jobs a year you need. Now, if you're quoting correctly, that's 60, up to 60 quotes a year. It's five quotes a month. Mm. It's less than a quote a week, or just over a quote a week. Yep. So, but if you're wanting to grow your business to that eight people, you know, and manage it and, and do that, then all of a sudden you're needing to be doing 20 quotes a week. So what's the, quotes so what's the benefit? So what's the benefit for for us advertising our businesses? What what, what are we? Depends um, on what you're looking for. So in your business, once again, are you, got, are you wanting to, to grow from a one or two man band up to a eight or 10 man band? Are you wanting to grow just to, to you know, I know one company, um, I train their apprentices, they've got three staff, that's enough, he doesn't need to be on the tools. He's got three staff working. They work on one job and move to the next and job. And he doesn't need to be on the tools. He doesn't need to be on the tools. Because his pricing is work accordingly. But isn't that the issue too? Where, like, so... But he's got long-term staff. He's got people... So he, he so he's, his supervisor, he still goes and visits the jobs. So he still pops into the jobs, checks them every day, makes sure everything's running smoothly, Great. manages the paid ordering, manages, you know, scheduling, all of that sort of stuff. But he's not physically on the tools eight hours a day. They make enough, so he's making enough out of those three people yep. to earn himself 100 plus grand a year. Great. So that's what you need if, you, if you're if you pricing your work correctly. That's right. Now, same thing. He needs 25 customers a year. Because he's three people, he does about 25 jobs a year. Mm. So and when you're growing, you need to spend a little bit more to get yourself established in the first 10 years, then you can drop off. Or you can keep on going. You know, you might decide you want 10, 20, 30, 40, 100 staff or contractors or whatever you might want to, to work for your business. So that's where you have to make that decision. But 10% in, 10% of your cost, if you look at it this way, um, if I was to give you 
ten dollars and you were to put it in that slot machine over there and every dollar that you put in there you pull ten dollars out how long are you going to stand there putting in a dollar to pull ten you're going to keep on going aren't you keep on going. absolutely okay now it's not going to work for everyone in that case it might be 20% that they need to do, or it might be 30%, depending on the market they're targeting. Mm -hmm. that, you know, that's it, isn't it? And that's so it doesn't, have, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to be the biggest painter in Australia, no. but the fact is by, I think, two things, especially with your reputation, is you, you actually want as many people to know of you. Yep. And secondly, if you're specialising, for instance, in... Queenslanders, let's just say that, that yep. almost basically a, a, a restoration, restoration, really. Yeah. Okay, and you know that that is an area where your team is just really good at. That's your yep. that's your comfort area, yep. and you know you can um, you can charge the premium for that. The fact is, the advertising that you do that specifically target to a client who's got that home in. Clayfield or Paddington or they are going to go, look, we have been watching your advertising, we've watched social media for instance, yep. which I believe in, and you know what, we really, we, we've asked a few people, and that, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's, you know, John Smith, Jenny Smith, that's the business that they just, they just really, really do, do the right thing, so, and they're, they're not going to worry about the money so much because no. they the, their home is more than just their castle. It's extension of their um. But you're their looking at a whole society. different demographic there as well because you're talking about your your probably top five percent of properties, as in value of the property and the income earners Absolutely. that you're talking about there. But then if you're targeting your lower socioeconomic areas, yeah. then you're going to be obviously getting a lesser dollar for your value. And it's going to be massive turn, it, turnover. And it's going to be, so this is, this is where I'm talking about, where you need to, to be working out. Look, I couldn't tell you how many times I, I'm, you know, on social media and on Google and all those sorts of things. How many times I, now I'm based, obviously everyone knows I'm based in Queensland, how many times I get ads for Victoria or Western Australia? Sponsored ads, because people don't know, or they're trying to do it themselves and uh, putting out blanket ads. Oh, I see what you and mean. Not understanding oh, right. <laughs> how, and they're they're based in Victoria. Yeah, right. And you know, I think oh, I've never heard of that painting company before. Where wonder where they are, Victoria. Um, why am I getting a Google ad in Queensland? For a Victorian painter. Because they're planning on moving to Queensland. That's why we That's need 500 yes. houses. That's exactly yes. why we need 500 yes. houses a day. Yes. To be handed over. So, but this is where people don't understand. So, you know, you can blanket your money. You need to, you need to engage professionals in what they do. We're professional painters. People engage us to paint their properties. Okay? That's, that's what they... Everyone watching this, they, people get engaged as painters. Why would you try to become a Google expert? Why would you drip a Facebook ad expert? You don't. You, you get those people to do that for you. You find people that, you know, yes, I can do some minor plumbing work at home. Yes, I can oh, do yeah. some, you know, whatever needs to be done. Oh, anybody a couple of weeks ago, electrical. I was doing that the other day. It's great. It's like finger in the side. That's what happened to me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but you, we all can do, you know, particularly as trainers, we'll all have a go at those types of things. So, but you've got to, you've got to remember that you want to utilise, if you're a business owner, do you, don't do your own book work, get a bookkeeper to do your book work. Don't do your own accountancy, get an accountant to do your, your, your books and your basses and things, things like that. Mm -hmm. They go to four years of university or whatever they do yeah. to get their degrees the same as we do, our time in painting to become a painter. Absolutely. Why are they getting $150 an hour when painters are struggling and fighting over 60? No. It's, it's, this is where... So that, should, that suite of services that, that we need to be, to be professional and productive, yep. that actually should be 
it has to be, um, it's not a luxury to no. actually have somebody that does your marketing or your accountant or, uh, you know, financial planner. Keeping, that all needs to be actually factored in to our price. So, you know, that's something we really, really need to do is, uh, is to encourage, you know, fellow, you know, members of the brush, you know, to... Um, to look at it that way, yeah. Because once you once you lock in those costs to your business, it's not a burden. It's actually it is actually the thing that's going to get you from survival mode to thriving mode, aren't mm -hmm. you? Yeah. Because the, you're going to be kept um, on track. Yep. Like you said, it, you're going to know. Hey, actually, we've got this much cash flow, or this is our um, our overdraft, or whatever we've got to sustain us, what projects can we do, you know, what can't we do, what do we want to target, that informs the decision making rather than, oh, well, like you, the example that you said, um, which is an everyday one, oh, we've been offered a million dollar contract. Yeah. And I think that's that's really important. We, education is just key. And 2024 has got to be, it's more than just consolidation. I think the rest of the trades are, I'm sorry to say, but they're killing us in many ways, aren't they? Yep. Yeah, look, they've probably got a better business acronym than what we're, the majority of painters are. Now, I'm not trying to put us down. You know, we were taught to paint, I was taught to paint, you were taught yeah, to absolutely. paint. I've learned how to business by going and educating myself. Yeah, so, yeah. majority of painters don't because they get into a rut on the, the business side of things and they just keep on the mouse wheel. Got to bring the dollar in, got to bring the dollar in, got to bring the dollar in. And then I would say as many as probably 80 plus percent of painting business owners, certainly from five staff or less, their partner does the books. Okay, that's true. Now, the partner's doing the books, but the partner doesn't get paid. She doesn't get, or he doesn't get paid out of the business. You need to, you, you need to be allowing that money for that person to be doing that job. That is a great and point. That, you know, because if, if they're doing the book work at night, you come home. I know so many painters that'll go out and do a quote, but they're not, their, their English isn't up to scratch, their handwriting, their spelling. I've got dyslexia. I, I suffer mild dyslexia. My spelling is crap. My spell check's my best friend, you know. Um, but you, you work through that, and you, so they, use, they get the, the partner to do the quotes. So the partner, so the painter goes out, he's working his 40 hours, then he's got to do his quote on the way home, and then he does his quote on the way home, then he gets home, and then once they get home, they sit down to do the quote. They do the quote up, there's another hour gone, then they send the quote, and then if they're not leaving it until Saturday or Sunday to do. But that other person that's sitting there typing up that quote for you and doing your book work and things like that, their time is valuable as well. Their, assault, their, their emotions are valuable. valuable. Puts pressure on the couple. Exactly. Um, you're taking away well, from yeah, That's one of the biggest ones. One of the biggest ones is when you say, you know, pressure on the couple. A lot of painters go to work, paint, and the partner looks after the finances. Okay? Yes. Partner's looking at the bank balance and saying, oh, when's the next dollar coming in? When's the next dollar coming in? True. Very true. The painter's saying, I'm working as hard as I can to try and get the, no, but we've got these bills to be paid, but I'm doing, and I can't do anymore. But you need to be, whereas no one sat down and actually worked out that the painter would be better off going and working for someone because they don't understand the pricing structure, because they don't understand their business. So this is where, once again, it all comes back to education. You know, even right at the beginning of this, this, podcast yeah. we talked about education you know educating yourself that you've got to educate if you want to get ahead and this is this next 12 months is going to be a massive one for education because those that don't within 18 months to two years will be bye-bye and they'll be employees that's that's where it's at and the employees that are out there because there's such a volume of work because everyone's fighting you know for the work there's plenty of work there's bucket loads of work. But there's a mentality like there's a no. bucket load of work, but we've got to cut each other's throats oh, to get it, isn't it? It's just This is the problem. Yeah. And look, and every business is different. Mm. This is what people don't understand. 
your business's structure is different to my business's Absolutely. structure and different to every other person's out there business's structure. I don't know what someone spends on leasing their vehicles. You know, I don't know how much someone spends. They own their vehicle. So they've got an extra $10 a week or $10, they've got an extra, sorry, they own their vehicle. They've got an extra $200 a week. Well, I've got, that, an, L, I've got an LDV and you've got one of those Rams. Exactly. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. Um, the truck feels like it does. Yeah, absolutely, yes. it does. So, but that's, you know, but those things that you need to work out. So every business is individual. You can only price the structure for your business off your figures. Don't worry about what anybody else out there is pricing. It makes no difference. You don't need to win every quote. You want to be winning around about 30% of the quotes you do. Now, if that means out of every 10 quotes that you do, you win three, okay? But if you, if you go out and you're winning more than that, you're too cheap. And you hear a lot of people say, oh, we can we nearly get all the quotes that we, oh. and you're thinking, okay. We, well, we, we oh my, win all well. our work. That's a, that's We're one just one. that good. We're so, it all. I'm thinking, no, it's, I've been told Because it's all yep. one and two men bands yep. that are telling you that and have been established businesses and are referral only. That goes back to that scenario I was yep. talking yep. about, the size of your business. Yep. So, yeah, if you're doing 20 quotes a year and you're winning 20 jobs a year, that's going to keep you a one or two man band busy. That's it. You want to go to eight people, you need 60, 70 jobs a year. Different. The same, the one and two man band or even up to three man band, I never have problems in dealing with clients. I never have to go back and do touch ups. I never have to, no, because you're the one doing the work. So you're the one that's giving that quality standard. When you've got eight or 10 people working for you, yes. it's their quality standard oh. and that you're then having to rectify. Do you think so? So this is where different headaches come in depending on the different business sizes. Well, I think you might have really, I mean, everything says so valid, but I was just thinking, the, the, the point in which you gave the example of the business that I think the three employers and mm -hmm. bosses off the tools. Yep. Now, for 2024, what, do you think that that sort of mum and dad business, to put it that mm -hmm. way, where we've always worked every day, we're like cracking the whip, we're the ones on the job. Do you think that this is the year where basically we need to get sort of out of the, you know, the the, the business side of thing, get above it? Do you think like, do you think sometimes, because that's oh, what I'm about. Until you step out of your business and yep. you look at it from a different perspective, yep. you, you don't, you, you will be stuck in that rut, you, that mouse wheel. You're stuck in that mouse wheel. You're stuck so in that people mouse wheel. Will say that. So it's until you step out and you actually are prepared to go through the pain right. of Good point. doing the figures yes. and understanding yep. your costs, that's scary. Yeah. And because most people don't, once again, we're painters, we're traders, we're not yep. business people. We're running businesses, yep. but we're not business minded. So this is where you have to change the perception. It, it, you have to get that business mind, which most people don't have. But tradies in particular, because once again, you quote for a job. Now, I'd say in the repaint market, 90% of the guys, they guesstimate. They don't quote it. They guesstimate the job. So they stand back and they look, oh, that side's going to take five days. That room's going to take 10 hours. That room's going to take me a day. What about the place code? But this is what I'm talking about. They don't understand, okay, how long, do, exactly how long does it take to paint that door? So you need to quote specifically for that door. You know, it, it's, this is where you've got to break it down. You know, this is one of the lessons that we teach in, in painting is that I, when I'm painting, training the apprentices and they're coming into their fourth year and they say, oh, you know, they're going to get wage rise and they want 30 bucks an hour and, you know, they've done the hard, all that sort of stuff. And then I, I take them out to the shed and say, okay, if you're that good, paint the door. I want to see how fast you can paint a panel door. And they'll take anything between three, one, I'm saying one side of the panel door, four panel door, between three to five minutes. Right. Now, I know myself... I can do a door in four minutes. 
two minutes aside, including your edges. That's, that's a tradesman's speed. Mm. That's what you would expect a tradesman to do mm. in your, your Acro enamel. A little bit different in gloss enamel because you've got to go back and check if you've got runs and sure. things like that. But in the Acro enamels, if you're a tradesman, you should be knocking out 10 doors, allow six minutes a door, you should knock out 10 doors an hour. Now, if they're doing one side in five minutes, that's 10 minutes, you know what I mean? You know where I'm going? Yes, absolutely. So all of a sudden, they're going from 10 doors to six doors. And then, of course, they've got to walk between and they, you know, all of those sorts of things. And then they pick up their phone and they have a look at them while they're walking between there, whatever it might be. So all of a sudden, they're doing about half the volume of work of a tradesperson. Yeah. When you put it into those sorts of perspectives for them, it starts to make them think. Yeah. It starts to make them think outside the box and start to understand that, hang on, yeah, maybe I'm not quite there yet. But you've got to do... Once again, we're tradies, we're taught how to paint. It's a matter of then educating from that painting perspective to a business perspective. Yep. And it's chalk and cheese. Absolutely. There is the, the difference between a painter and a business person. Forget you're in the painting industry, you're a business person. Yeah, that's correct. That's a, that you've is you've got to very true. Forget you're a painter. It's like if you go to the local hamburger joint and they're a business person or McDonald's. Look at McDonald's. McDonald's know and I don't know, these figures are probably completely wrong, but McDonald's know that it costs them five cents to put an extra piece of cheese on a cheeseburger or whatever, if you double it. They would, extra, right? they would know everything. And they know they can charge you 50 cents, and you're gonna pay the 50 cents for that five cent piece of cheese. So they know they're gonna make their mark up and they're gonna make their profits out of those types of things. They don't make the profit out of the $3 cheeseburger or two or whatever they are these days. They don't make the profit out of that, they make the profit out of the extras. You know, that movie, Super Size. I don't know if you ever saw yeah, that. Yeah, I did, that you doc guy. That doc yeah, was great. You know, the, the things got a bit bigger, but they didn't only went up by a fraction of how much went into things. So the actual outgoings are different. So, you know, that's where a professional business has it over, you know, in a professionally run painting business, will have it over the other guys every time. Every time without fail. You know, it, it's just the nature of the beast. So you think that, as you're saying, that for 2024, it's really, if we can get get out from just being one of the workers in the business, as you said, it's scary, it's, uh, people say, yeah, but my business won't work if I'm not there. And if the question is, well, what, hundreds why do. isn't it? Hundreds do. It's well, a why of, isn't? That's the question, the, isn't it? The, like, in, yeah. that, in that scenario, I would probably say the reason being is that you haven't trained your staff correctly wow. or you haven't got the right staff. Because wow. if you train your staff, you train your supervisors, you train your people how you want the job done, yep. and they follow, once again, it comes back to a system, system they absolutely. follow a system, yep. and that's a matter of you as the boss training in that system. If you don't train in that system, mm -hmm. then... They're doing whatever they want. They're doing whatever they want. Right. So they're uh, under a yeah. Yeah. It's the same. I have the discussion all the time with the apprentices. Okay. So which way is right and which way is wrong? We'll be in a class of students. I had this last week. Had a handful of students in there. We were, we were doing some business units and we are doing estimating. Right. And I said, okay, which way is right, which way is wrong? And they looked at me and I said, now, you're coming into a new house. Mm. Do you mask and spray first or do you putty and gap first? which is right, which was wrong. Two of them, they've been taught to spray first. Three, we're taught to cap first, which is right, which is wrong. And of course, that then started the debate between them, how they, you know, all of those sorts of things. So there's no right and wrong answer because the, the, the end result's what you're after. So it doesn't matter how you get to that end result so long as the end result's right. But... When you're bringing into a new staff member that is a, a qualified painter, you ask that question, do you gap and fill mm. or do you spray first? Okay, well, this is our system. And you have to educate that painter on your business system, so there's a not what they've done, yeah. not what they've done previously. Because that will throw out, if they suddenly become your supervisor and someone, you know, Freddie's off crook, and they are the, the next senior on the job, and then suddenly they're reverting to a system that nobody else has done, all of a sudden everything gets a pie on. And your job that should have allowed for, for seven days to do suddenly turns into nine because things are all back to front. Yeah, they're changing the whole system on the gang. 
or yeah. whoever. So this is where you've got to, this is where it comes down to staff training. So you've got to understand your business costs, your business systems, train your staff in those business systems. Then once they're trained in that systems, identify your supervisors as you grow your business. And you know, then identify who is actually. So you're producing your own unique manual for your business. Yes, hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. What's your business? And every business is different. Like I said, that's saying that's that's the easiest scenario. New housing. Do you putty and gap or do you mask and spray? What's wrong? What's wrong? That's right. Which one? Exactly. <laughs> you know. So. Back to what I guess we, we sort of started talking about was for 2024, I think that it's going to be a massive education year Good. for we industry. Need it. We yeah. do. Um, the more people that, that actually get involved in educating themselves, I think is imperative because uh, if you're going into business by yourself or without someone else or anything like that and you don't have the structures in place, you're going to fail. I can't remember the exact statistic, but I, I think it's over fifty percent of businesses fail in the first couple of years. Yeah, but, oh, I think it's more than that. Yeah. yeah, I thought it was like seventy, but there you go. There you go. So you know, so if you don't have those systems in place and don't have that understanding and don't have that grounding and that foundation, you're headed for disaster. Not necessarily means you're going to go bankrupt or go to the wall or anything like that, but you're working. You're really going to learn. And you're going to learn the hard lessons the hard way. We learnt the hard lessons oh, the hard sure. way, you know, as I said earlier, yeah, early 2000 I got burnt for 50k, you know, because I didn't, you know, um, I made some mistakes. When a builder working for one, boop, packed up and went to the wall. You know, it, it's, and that's just sometimes what happens. And that's happening all the time, isn't it? It's now it's just, happening more. Yeah. Now it's happening more and more. And it's not just the little builders, it's the big ones. You know, you're talking millions and millions of dollars. You know, um, and then that just puts everyone behind the eight ball. So look, 2024, I see lots of work, lots of good work. Educate you guys, educate yourself, everyone. Make sure that you understand what your costs are, what you need in your business. Understand, you know, a direction. Set yourself a plan for the next 12 months on what you're wanting to do. Set your goals and targets. Absolutely. They're the main things. And, and oh, journal down. And journal down like you said journal down in whichever format you, you is comfortable or for your business but if if there's been a lesson on a job actually put it down somewhere you know remember what it, remember what it, what it is you know um i mean it's good to get how can i say feedback uh online from other painters that's great but you know what there's you know you should have your own um Basically, your, your own uh, checklist of, of things yeah. that you do and that you've learnt from and what you're checking for and, and so forth. So you're improving all the time. Exactly. So, well, with that, guys, it's been a bit over an hour. So, look, we hope that you get something out of it. And yeah, I know we do. We, yeah. you know, it's good conversation for us to because we can share that information with the apprentices and with the other people that we, we and isn't that the, I was the, say, the difference between the difference between our apprentices or people go through apprenticeships or former apprenticeships where we go through all of go through all of those things to other people who RPL uh, yes RPL yeah. and all of that who just have never been exposed to all of that they That's might right. be really Maybe they can paint the door very, very quickly and proficiently, but to actually understand what goes into actually everything, all the cost associated of just arriving on the job. That's right. From the vehicle, the, the insurances, all of that. Um, I think that's the benefit of getting um, people into it. So Trump that's Trump another thing too, is if guys are... Uh, don't just get the guys RPL, please. No. Put the, <laughs> no <laughs> please put train. them through a tr apprenticeship. Train. You know, yeah. it's worth it. That they're, they're, we're better as an industry. Yeah. Um, so, so that's yep. what I would encourage. That's okay. Sure. So thanks again, everyone. And we look forward to seeing you next time on the Painters Podcast. Thank thanks, you. Matt. Thanks, Nigel. See you again. Cheers, guys. Bye, Bye Rob.